Once you've installed the Document Library Pro plugin, it's time to start adding documents. There are several ways to do this to make it as easy as possible for you. You can add each one manually along with all the data that you want to display in your document library about that document. You can select existing files from the WordPress media library such as PDFs or Word docs or any file type and convert them into documents which will appear within your library. You can use drag and drop to upload multiple files at once and automatically convert them into documents. And you can also prepare a CSV file using any spreadsheet software such as Microsoft Excel, add all the data about the documents and where they're stored and upload them to your document library on your WordPress website. But before you learn how to do each of those things, we need to think about how to organize our document library in the first place. And to do that, we can do it with categories and tags. Now let's go into documents in the WordPress admin, and then we're going to go to the categories page. And let's add some categories. So it's really easy to add categories. It's just the same as adding categories to your posts if you have a blog on your site and you just add the name and the slug. The slug appears in the link to the category. It doesn't appear on the actual web page. The category name is what will appear on the website. And if you are using the folders option to display your documents, which just to remind you looks like this, then this is the category name. So there's accounting processes and so on. So you click add new category, easy. And if you want to add subcategory structures, then just select a parent category and then you'll add something as the child category. So I might want to add processes underneath finance or financial processes. And then I would select finance as the parent. So that's a, just a category to show you how it's done. You can also add tags. You can add them for each document on the add document page, or you can add them centrally on the documents tags page. So let's say we might want to add tags for the type of document, let's say um, spreadsheets or something. There, and then you just add a new tag. The, the description isn't used for anything, so you can ignore that field. And that's how you add tags. And once you've added them, then you can um, categorize and tag each of your documents. And then you can display that information and allow users to filter by that data in the document library. Next, I will show you how to add a document manually. That's probably the most common way of adding documents, but um, you can do it whichever method you prefer. So you go to documents, add new. And if you're familiar with WordPress, then this page will look very familiar to you. So we've got add new document and um, let's call it example document. It's not very creative of me, I know. Um, that's the title of the document. You can add some content. This will appear on the single document page um, if you're using that. And it will also appear in the content column of your document library if you have chosen to add a content column. So this is the content. Now, the great thing about the content is that you can put whatever you want here. So you can add images which will appear directly on the single document page. Um, this is all standard WordPress stuff. You can even embed YouTube videos. So if you just paste the link to a YouTube video, for example, then you can actually display that on the page so people don't even have to download the video. Uh, so you can put whatever you want in the content and that will appear on the single document page or in the content column if you're using one on your main document library page. I'm going to write an excerpt too. So this is the excerpt or summary. So that's what that's typically used for. Let's choose a category. We'll choose some tags. We've only got one tag, but I can add more tags here if I want. So I'm going to say business. So you can add tags that way. And once you've done that, then that will become available for your other documents as well. I'm going to ignore file size for now because I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to go to document link now. And as you can see, you can either just have none. So if you're using the content column to display the full content or an embed of the document, you can just you don't need a link for the document, do you? Because you've just got the single document page. So you leave this to none. If you want the user to be able to download a file such as a PDF or any other file type, you would choose file upload and add file. 
But before we do that, the other option is a custom URL. Now that's really good if you're hosting the document externally. It may be that you want the document download button to link to a, another website such as Dropbox. So if the document's hosted on Dropbox or SoundCloud or Office 365 or wherever you're choosing to host the document, then you can link to it there. It doesn't have to be on your WordPress website. And also you can link to another web page like a YouTube video so that they will then link through to watch the document, to watch the video in this case on YouTube. So you would enter the full URL there. But for this example, I'm going to add a file because that's the most common option. And I'm going to choose a PDF. So I just added file. This was already in my media library, but if you haven't already uploaded them, then you'd use this page, upload files. It's all pretty self-explanatory. And here we've got it in my media library. So I'm gonna select that and click add file. And you can see it's worked because it is there. So now I've done that, I can't click on the file size anymore. The reason for that is because the file size will be calculated automatically. If I had chosen a third party document, then the plugin document library pro wouldn't have been able to calculate the file size. But if I choose file upload, it can calculate that file size, which is why it's grayed out here. And featured image. If I wanted, I could have an image column on my main document library page. And also I could display an image in the right hand column of the single document page. Most document libraries probably won't want to do this. But if you wanted to upload, say, an image to represent each document, like this one or something or whatever, um, then you could. And uh, you could also use it to add custom file type icons or something like that. So you can use a featured image if you want, but um, it's not that relevant to all document libraries. And then we click publish. So that is how you add a document manually, which is method one. The next method I will show you is how to convert files to documents which are already in your media library. You may want to do that if you've already you got the documents on your WordPress website for another purpose, but you're adding Document Library Pro to improve the management of your documents. But you don't want to re-upload everything. You want to just convert existing media files. Um, as you can see, the documents are all listed here in the documents section. So if we go to all documents, we can see my document that I just added. So what you need to do is get the files from your media library into the documents section so that they can be treated as documents. That's really easy to do. So we go to the media library, which is the media section of the WordPress admin, and we need the list view. There's two little icons here, and you can see that I'm on the grid view. I need the list view, so I'll click on the grayed out icon. And here we can select our documents, which is what I want. So I'm going to select my sample CSV, and my sample Word document. Um, you can select any file types and convert them into documents. It really doesn't matter. So, but for the purposes of this example, typically you might have lots of images that you're using for your blog or your website images, which are not documents. And you might have some PDFs or something which you do want to convert to documents. So this is how you separate them out. Once you've ticked them, you go to bulk up actions and click add to document library and then apply, which is dead easy, as you can see. It says two documents successfully created. I'm going to click the link to view the documents. So here they are. Now the title uses the file name, which as you can see, isn't very user friendly. So I'm going to click on it and make some changes. So I'm going to call it example CSV and you can add extra information like content as well. You can see that the document I selected in the media library has already been uploaded as the document link. So that's really handy. And you can do things like adding to the cat, adding it to finance here because uh, it's already saved. It actually has the file size in the box. So it um, has already worked that out. And excerpt. You could type whatever. So even though all I did was select a media library file, I can still add all the extra data about the documents which I want to display in my document library and then click update. So that was method two for adding documents. Methods three and four 
are both on the import screen. So if we go to documents import, you'll see two sections. There's drag and drop file upload and CSV upload. First of all, we will do drag and drop file upload. So I'm going to go to my download folder. Actually, I'll go select file so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so if I go to downloads, I'm just going to find something I want to upload. That'll do. Um, and you can convert that into a document. This was an image, but that's fine. You can have any file type. So that's one way of adding documents. And so you can upload as many as you want this way. You can just drag them in dozens of files at a time. It's fine. And once they're uploaded, you can see them here. So I'm going to go back to my list of documents and that's not a very nice file name. So let's change that. And that's a picture of me horse riding. So let's just call it riding. And here it is here. If it's an image document, you may well want to actually select the image as the featured image and show it in the uh, image column of your document library. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, if you want to do that, that's fine. Or you can just have it as a downloadable document. So that's how you do the drag and drop file upload, which again converts the document into, um, into this section. Finally, we're going to import a CSV. This is the most advanced option, but it's also a great time saver if you have a large number of documents to import. If you've got maybe a couple of dozen, I'd say don't bother, just add them manually or using any of the three methods I've already shown you. But if you've got hundreds or thousands of documents, you should definitely use the CSV method uh, because as well as allowing you to upload the files easily, it lets you add all the data about each document. So you don't have to manually add the file name, the sorry, the document name, the content, the excerpt, etc. So I clicked on the CSV option on the import page, and now I want to choose a file. And I've already got one that I prepared, which is sample document data. Um, to do this, you need to look at the knowledge base for Document Library Pro, uh, which I will link to below this video. Uh, you need to know the correct format for your the document data within the CSV file. So you'd use something like Excel spreadsheets, Mac numbers or um, Google Sheets, any of those, any spreadsheet software to prepare a spreadsheet with all the data. And then you would export it as a CSV file, which is an option in all of those systems. So you use our, our knowledge base to find the correct format, which is what I've done for my documents. And then you select the CSV and click open. So it's selected it here. And then I'm going to, oops, then I'm going to continue, except that it unselected it because I clicked in the wrong place there. So I'm doing that and then continue. So on the next page, it maps the fields to my document fields. So you, it's pretty clever at working it out. If you've got your headers correct, like if you have a column heading in the CSV file called name, then it knows to map that. But you can make any tweaks here to make sure it's got it right. And with mine, um, because I use the sample CSV file from the knowledge base, it actually has got it all correct. So I can go straight ahead and run the importer. So it tells us the documents are being imported. It's pretty quick unless you've got many thousands of documents and then view documents. So here I've got lots of documents which have been added automatically. So now I've got lots of documents for the next stage of this course, which is to show you how to list documents in the front end of your website.